Let me take a moment to reiterate here. We'll be talking about 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 through 9, and verse 24, I believe it is. Yes. And I want to kind of use this portion of scripture to kind of um, bring out all the other four or five weeks of what we've been talking about, which was in week one, or part one, we talked about understanding the minister, minister and the ministry. And we talked about the, about the minister specifically talking about the charge, the charge, the charge. We saw that in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. And then week two, or part two, we talked about reconciliation. How that in Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter five, verses seventeen through twenty, he he says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away; all things have become new. And then verse eighteen, he says, "And we all have this ministry of reconciliation." So it's all inclusive. This ministry to reconcile or restore souls to Jesus is inclusive of every born again believer, regardless of. The, the, the specific calling within the body of Christ, when I'm, I'm referring to pastors, apostles, um, prophets, evangelists, because he says we all can do something, we all can help. So that was week two. Then week three, or part three, was the order. So we used 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40, where it says God does everything decently in order. And we looked at the order, the order, or, or the governing um, things must be done in order so it will be impactful and effective, um, especially in the work of the Lord Jesus in winning souls. Then part four, or week four, we dealt with ability, right? First Peter chapter four, I believe it was, 10, 11, 12, 13, how that God has given the ability, the ability, given us the ability to do what he's called us to do. So he's, he doesn't just ask us to do something. He enables us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We saw there in, excuse me, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Luke chapter 4, verse 24, 20, chapter 24, verse 49, and other scriptures. God enables us, empowers us to do his will, his work. And then last week we talked about the structure, the structure and we were specifically in the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter one, the latter portion of chapter one of the book of Numbers, chapter three, chapter seven, chapter eight, 17, 18, and a little bit of 35. So we talked about the minister in understanding the ministry as well as the minister, we, we covered the minister, be it male or female, those who administer the word of God or those who minister within the work of the Lord, which all of us should be doing. And then why do we do this? Because we've been reconciled. And he says that now that we've been reconciled, we are ambassadors for Christ. And then he gives us the order so that things won't get, or things will not become chaotic within the church, in the ministry, God lays out the order. And then he lets us know that he's enabled us. Second Corinthians, chapter three, um, he says, we are not sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who have made us able ministers of the New Testament. So that's where the ability comes in and then the, the structure of it all. All right. So you should be in first Kings chapter 10, verse one through nine, and I'll read it. And then we'll expositorily go back over it. So I'm reading from the King James text. If you have a different text, that's fine. We'll get the gist of it. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 1 through 9. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Verse 2, and she came to Jerusalem with a very great train and camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions that was not, there was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. So he shared everything with her. And when the queen of Sheba 
had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he built and the meat on his, of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, verse 6, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of the acts and thy wisdom, and of thy wisdom. How be it? I believe not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he the king, or he made you king, to do judgment and justice. As I was giving thought to this, and I'll read verse 24. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. This particular, these Bible passages, this part of this chapter, or I would say the, this whole chapter, it really speaks to me concerning the, the church today. This was Solomon, uh, the third king of Israel. It was Saul, then David, Solomon's father, and now Solomon. And God had raised Israel up to be examples for him so that other nations would come and see the true God and, and the real God and, and what God could do um, mentally, spiritually, and even the blessings of the, the resources of the world. So God used Solomon in this manner. And I really like this because we can relate and we can correlate this to the church today, to the church today. The, the church today, we are, the Bible tells us, we are the ecclesia or the called out ones. We're called out of darkness into the Lord's marvelous light that we may, the Bible says there in Peter, that we may show forth the praises of him who called us out of the world. Called us out of the world for what? Yes, for us to go to heaven. Yes, for us to be with Jesus. But until we get there, until we get there, we have a duty, we have a calling, we have a job, we have a mission. As the Bible tells us, Jesus speaking in Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, 20, he says, go ye into all the world, teach in the name, in the, in, teach and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The whole mission of the church Yes, we fellowship, but the mission, we fellowship so that iron can sharpen it iron, so that we can do the will of the one who saved us, which is Jesus. And that will is the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's still his will, his desire for men and women to be saved. And hence, this is one of the reasons we were directed and went in this uh, direction of, talked about the charge the minister week one charge we we've, we've been called we've been called how do we know we've been called because week two we've been reconciled god restored us and if he restored us he wants others to be restored and then giving us structure just like israel when they came out of egypt right they crossed the red sea they were delivered well they really didn't have structure they had been delivered but they didn't have or excuse me they didn't have order so god he had to give Moses the, the commandments to give them order, and order would lead into structure. So, and also the ability to do the work. And we see that 
in Exodus 25 and 35, who gave them the ability to build the different parts of the temple. So how does this relate? It, it relates to you and I in the church today. And that's what it's really all about. We use the Old Testament, we refer to the Old Testament, we look at the Old Testament, and we see how we can apply it in our lives today. So let's go through this, um, each one of these verses, or as much as possible, in 1 Kings chapter 10. So when the queen of Sheba, and Sheba, I know oftentimes I've said this, I've said um, Queen Sheba, but it was really the queen of Sheba. And the modern day geographical area is, is thought to be Ethiopia or Etridia. So we can insert in there the queen of Ethiopia or Etridia. So the queen, she did what? She heard. So I'm sharing that to show you the, the geographical distance between Jerusalem and modern day Ethiopia, Etridia area. So she traveled, it, it, it took effort. That's the point I'm making. So she heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. So we see her senses being moved and we see the good news of God being spread abroad from Jerusalem area all the way down, or I should say Judea. Um, it was the, the word spread all the way down to modern day Ethiopia. She heard and it so stimulated her that she came, she put forth this effort, got all these resources, all these people, and she came, and she came with a mission. The Bible says she came to prove him with hard questions. So I've heard all these things about Jesus, but I'm going to go to church and find out for myself. I want someone to invite me. I want, to, I want someone to stimulate that, that, that curiosity in me. Is Jesus really this good? So basically, the queen of Sheba, she came to prove or to try Solomon with hard questions, the Bible says. And the Bible says in verse 2, and she came to Jerusalem with a very great train. Again, so all these resources, right? It wasn't just her traveling by herself, maybe a hundred or a couple hundred people with camels uh, that bore spices much gold, so she had to have the pack animals to be able to carry all this gold, all these precious stones, who knows, diamonds, emeralds, I don't know. And when she was come to Solomon, the Bible says here in verse two, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. So not only did she bring all these resources, which was a, um, a culture back then when you would come, when one, um, king, queen would go to another, they would bring all these possible or potential gifts. But that wasn't the focus. The focus was she came and she communed with him or talked with him, communicated with him with all that was in her heart. All the things that she had heard, she came and said, yes, I wanna ask, I wanna ask him some questions concerning the things in my heart, concerning life. You know, and that's how it is with God. We come to church and prayerfully, God answers some of the questions that we have at that time in our life from the word of God. That's the purpose of church. That's when it, it doesn't become just religious. I'm coming seeking and searching God to speak to my heart because I have some questions. I need some direction. I need some guidance. So basically, this is the Queen of Sheba. In verse 3, the Bible says, and Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything that he hid, uh, there was not anything that anything hid from the king, which he told her not. So the question she had, as the Holy Spirit gave him wisdom, he answered those questions. And I really believe just personally, we have someone coming to, well not, coming to church, seeking God, let me just say seeking God, and they, they come to us as ministers of reconciliation, remember, uh, week two, ministers of reconciliation, looking to be restored, God to give us the wisdom through the Holy Spirit to answer those individuals, because he cares about them, he loves them, and this is why he's called us, he's charged us, he's set us aside, he's called us out of darkness, so that 
as we had an, uh, questions, someone answered those questions and brought us to Jesus. Now the baton has been passed to us and we do the like. All right. So Solomon answered all these questions, verse 4, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 4. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house he had built. So notice these senses that are being appealed, the human senses, the vision she heard. So the things she saw, now the things she heard, all these things just, just moved her emotionally, moved her emotionally. This is real. It's not just what someone else is saying. Now I'm experiencing it for myself. And that's one of the reasons for us to evangelize and reach out to people. The Bible says, and I have it in here, Psalm 34, taste of the Lord and see that he's good. Taste of the Lord for yourself and you'll see that he's good. I can tell you I have a testimony, but I want you to try the Lord for yourself. For 30 days, for two weeks, start small. Serve the Lord for a week. And I guarantee you he'll bless you mentally, spiritually, physically. He'll answer your questions. He'll meet your needs. Serve him for 30 days. Serve him for six months. Taste of the Lord. Try the Lord. That should be our driving message. Taste of the Lord. I can tell you my testimony, but experience him for yourself. So the Queen of Sheba, she experienced what she heard, what she thought she heard. She experienced even much more. So she's seen all the Solomon, all Solomon's wisdom. She saw the house that he built. So she saw what God was doing through him. People see what God is doing in us and through us, a changed life. In verse five, it just gives us a description, a brief description. She says, and or the Bible says, she saw the house he had built, verse five, and the meat at his, of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. She was just in awe. So as we look at this scripture, we associate a word with it. We can associate testimony. There was a testimony for God. We should have a testimony for Jesus. It matters what we look like. It matters how we conduct ourselves because we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are showing people what Christ, and not that we're perfect, we're not saying that, but we grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. We are learning, we are developing in God. So verse five speaks to testimony for Jesus in what? In all manner of conversation. Let me give you a New, scripture, uh, New Testament scripture to associate. 1 Timothy 4.12. Testimony for Jesus in all manner of conversation. 1 Timothy 4.12. The Bible says, Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity or love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Right. Verse 6. And she said, the Queen of Sheba, she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of the acts and of thy wisdom. Taste of the Lord. And that's what is that's what is like with Jesus Christ. We can share and we should share, but when a person experienced the Lord Jesus for themselves, only the half was told them. Only the half of the emotional experience or the inner peace um, we can only share half of that when the individual experiences them themselves. It, it takes you to a whole different level in life and a different perspective of God. Verse seven, how be it, I believe not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the have was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame which I heard. A New Testament scripture we can correlate with this is John chapter 4. The Samaritan woman, when she met Jesus at the well, she was so moved of the conversation that she had and what Jesus said to her and how Jesus loved her. She ran down into the city 
and she began to tell those individuals in the city, come see a man. Come see a man who told me all I ever I did. Is not this the Christ? He knows all about me and he still loves me and still gave me eternal water to drink. So we correlate, we could correlate if you so choose, the Queen of Sheba, her experience with Solomon with John chapter four, the Samaritan woman's experience with Jesus. In verse eight, she goes, happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee and that hear thy wisdom. So now she was an eyewitness. As we say in the nonprofit world, she became a key champion. We are key champions for Jesus spreading that message. She was an eyewitness of the joy of Jesus, the blessings of God. Folks, as Christians, we have family members, we have loved ones, we have neighbors. They see our lives. Let, our, let us live our lives in a certain way so that they are eyewitnesses. So that maybe in some cases, the only Bible they read is our lives. Again, not that we're perfect, but when we fall, we lean on Jesus and he lifts us back up. Verse nine, and I'll be uh, stopping shortly. Blessed be the Lord thy God. This is her testimony. The queen of Sheba in this far foreign land, which really opens the door as we read in Acts chapter eight, the Ethiopian eunuch. We, uh, uh, we correlate in theology, we correlate Acts chapter eight with this experience of first Kings chapter 10. The door to Ethiopia was opened up here or the gospel to be sh uh, shared in Ethiopia was opened up. Um, excuse me, verse nine, blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore may he be king to do judgment and justice. So when it's all said and done, she gave glory to God. And what do we know? Jesus said this. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. This lady was so moved by what she saw in Solomon, what she heard, but she knew it was God doing it in Solomon and through Solomon. And in so many words, summarizing it, she says, to God be the glory. In verse 24, this is why I wanted to read it. In verse 24 of this chapter, and all the earth sought, the, sought Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. So we see this experience with the, um, with the queen of Sheba, with Solomon. And we read in verse 24, all the then known world was impacted by this. All the world sought Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. God has called us for such a time as this, as Esther utters the words, that all the world, and we see this in the, in the Gospels, or excuse me, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said, ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, unto Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world, all the world, you'll be witnesses. So let this light so shine that is in us. So Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, as I'm going to conclude it, uh, this, these last five, six weeks, talking about the minister, we've been, we've been reconciled, God gives us order, he enables us to carry out the mission, and he gives us structure. Why? So that souls can be reached. All right, I'm going to stop there. Um, let us pray. I'm a little late for questions, but if you have some questions, put them in the chat. And after I pray, I'll just take a look and then we're going to transition. Or as we transition, maybe there's a moment or two in the transition I can answer those questions. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who illuminates us to your word. Continue to bless now your people. Help us to grow in your grace. Help us to spread your word. Help us to fulfill that which you called us to do, Jesus. And we'll thank you for it. Amen.